everyone and welcome to the chat and vibe series for the upcoming vitality festival which starts on october the 31st and goes for nine days we have incredible speakers from all around australia we've got 70 leading experts in the health and wellness field and one of those are here today with us dr arna rubenstein welcome and thank you for joining us here today it's a pleasure i feel really honored to be here <laughs> You've just had an amazing story and journey to bring you up to where you are today. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, um, I started as a doctor, actually. I was a, a general practitioner for a few years, and then I did nearly 20 years in emergency medicine. And, and one of the things that I just consistently saw was teenagers who were struggling, teenagers who were getting into trouble, teenagers who were turning up in accident and emergency departments. Um, but I also saw that a lot of the patients who I was dealing with at the other end, the older patients, that a lot of their issues actually started when they were teenagers. And um, it just sort of seemed obvious to me that the time that we sh should be putting more uh, effort into was in fact those earlier years. And then I discovered rites of passage and how every indigenous and traditional community all over the world would have created rites of passage for their boys and their girls. That's amazing. And you have reached over 200,000 people in 20 countries around the world. That is quite incredible, leading them through these rites of passage. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Sure. Well, the idea is that um, ideally we celebrate and acknowledge a person's transition from one key life stage to the next. And, you know, one of the very obvious big ones is a boy becoming a a young man or an adult, a girl becoming a young woman or an adult. Uh, and if we can support that well, uh, then it's a very positive experience. And if we don't support that or it's unfacilitated, unfortunately for a lot of people, their sort of moment of growing up can be very traumatic and difficult. And uh, in my research, what I discovered was that not only did all of these communities around the world create rites of passage, but they would all do it in the same way. They'd use the same elements of taking the, the young ones away, um, uh, sharing stories of the history of the community and using stories as a way of passing on wisdom and knowledge, creating challenges, uh, allowing the, the young ones to make a vision for how they wanted to be in the future. And then importantly, recognizing that every single child is different and they all have their own unique gifts and talents and really honoring and recognizing that genius and spirit that's in each of them. So we've taken those elements and brought them into a modern context, so they're appropriate today, and set up these rites of passage. And first we were doing them in Australia and more and more people got interested in them and schools got interested in them and started to grow. And now we're in like 50, 60 schools around the country. Um, and then we started doing some work overseas and, and you know, it's slowly just grown and grown to the point where all the time now we're getting uh, emails and phone calls saying, you know, can you come to our school? We want to really turn year nine into a rite of passage program. And yeah, as you said earlier, there've been hundreds of thousands of people through the programs that we've helped to create. And we want to see every child in the world going through a healthy rite of passage. You know, it would be a, a, a massive thing if we could do that. Mm. Uh, it's such an important time because it's right when, you know, and I've got two boys myself and, you know, when they go through that 15, 16 year age, they really start to look of how they can express themselves in a different way. From what I understand, that's when you take the boys and girls away. And do they do it on their own or is that done with parents or how does that work? Sure. Yeah, look, it's anywhere, you know, the ages can vary, but anywhere from 13 to 17 is kind of the ideal for this particular rite of passage. And there's not just one way to do it. We, we use the rite of passage framework, which is acknowledging they need a rite of passage and that there need to be certain elements. And our aim is training people in the rite of passage framework and then supporting them to create their own community, their own program in their own way in their own community. And so some of the programs we create and the ones we run on my um, property up here in Byron Bay, are for parents and children that they do together. Some of the schools who we train do it just with the students and the parents may or may not be involved at some point during the program. So there are lots of ways we can do it. 
I definitely like to have the parents involved as much as possible because actually, I'll tell you something, it's not just a rite of passage for the children becoming young adults. For them to become young adults, the parents also need to go through a rite of passage and start letting go of, they, we talk about they need to let go of the child within so that the adult can actually come out in a healthy way. Um, and if they don't let go and they keep treating their adults as children, we have a whole nother set of problems. Um, so I, I actually also now very much uh, am interested in doing rites of passage with adults. Uh, and as well as that, um, uh, we've created a transformational parenting program. And um, it sort of came about because of COVID and we couldn't go and do face-to-face -face work and, and we sort of took a step back and look at, looked at some of the big things that have happened over the last few years and we realised it's not just about creating rites of passage. We also need to work on just good common sense parenting mm. and supporting parents mm. uh, and giving them basic resources and acknowledging there's not just one way to parent, but for our children to thrive, you know, we need to work out what they need. And there are some common sense things that just work well, like just one example is making sure that you have something that you enjoy, that you enjoy doing with your child one on one and that you do it regularly. And it can be anything from walking the dog to playing music to going to movies to doing sport to, you know, but something that you just do one-on-one, -on -one, hopefully without your mobile phone, not asking them lots of questions, just being together. And just that simple thing makes such a difference. And, you know, there's even research which shows that families who have dinner together three or more times a week do better. So... You know, encouraging families to have dinner together and, and we've got something called a golden check-in, which is a great way for family members to check in with each other and find out how everyone's really going, not to say good, but how they're actually going. And then when we know someone, how someone's going, we can support them. So our transformational parenting program has been really successful and we're building a community of people who, who are you know, interested in transformational parenting. Mm. I think that's so important, particularly at the moment, because a lot of people are spending a lot more time at home with their families than they thought they could, and kids can't go out, parents can't go out to be entertained. So they're having to navigate relationships and different personalities and, you know, entertaining each other within the four walls, which I know has been really challenging for a lot of people. Absolutely. And the reason why we've developed what we have and what I'll be talking about in my presentation is it's challenging, but it's also a great opportunity. And there will be families who are much closer as a result of this time and, and parents who have had conversations with their children that they have really needed to have and that have been life changing. And so our aim is to look at, well, yes, we do have the COVID situation, but how can we do it in the best way possible? And and how can we use it as an opportunity to really build within our families and make the most of this time? And so with your presentation at the Vitality Festival, you're talking to people about thriving, not just surviving in COVID. Tell everyone a little bit about what they can expect in your workshop. Well, yeah, thriving, not just surviving. I, you know, it's, that's what it's about. And, and in order to be able to do that, um, we need to support each other. We need to know what's going on. We need to develop healthy habits. Um, and so we, we've created a process um, where we're encouraging people to do what I said, the golden check-in, and then um, we give people particular topics to talk about, whether it's a dinner or making a space to talk about them and encouraging the sharing of stories and letting the children hear the adult stories and um, creating a vision for how everybody wants to be together as a family and acknowledging that we have challenges, but when we can name them, we can also look for creative ways to manage them. And then importantly, recognising that every person in the family has their own different and unique talents and gifts and genius and, and spending some time acknowledging those things. So starting with the family unit and really building that uh, stronger and more healthy and then that goes into the community and that flows on into uh, all sorts of different levels of life. Mm. So essentially, you're really helping people to plug into their own family tribe, which then, you know, and this at the moment, people really need something to plug into, you know, because we're kept so 
separate from everybody, especially down here in Victoria. And that's really been important to me during this time is making sure my tribe, my family is thriving and surviving during this time. Definitely. And, and if we can support more families to do that, you know, this, is a, this whole COVID period is a rite of passage. And I know from having run rites of passage and seen people going through rites of passage for 25 years that people either come out of it better and they've grown. And, and look, by the way, they're always challenging. A rite of passage always has challenges and ordeals within it. No different to what's going on. But some people will come out of that stronger, more appreciative, more connected. And some people will come out of it and go, oh, you know, woe is me and my life's terrible. And, and look, by the way, I need to say, there has been genuine suffering during this period. And there has been hardship. So it's not about ignoring that. But it's about, okay, what do I learn? What do I learn about myself? What do I learn about others? How can I be a better person? How can I be more appreciative in life? You know, how can I make sure that uh, when things change that I really do as well as I can and support others to do the same? And we definitely have that opportunity and I want to do everything I can to support people for that to happen. Yeah, that's great advice because I think so many people are feeling challenged for so many reasons, you know, and some people are able to use this as a springboard to really create amazing things. And there are some people, I think, who are really you know, going down the gurgler, basically, because of, of where they're at. What's maybe one or two little things that you would suggest to somebody if you're really feeling like the world's caving in on you right now, just some one or two things they could do to maybe shift their mental perspective? Sure. Look, I think when things are really difficult, one of the problems is we're sort of, we're squashed in, in on ourselves. And what we need to do, hopefully, is actually be able to step out and, and see things from the outside. So, so an activity that I recommend people can do really well, and you can do this on your own, or you can do it with other people, is just um, uh, find a space and either in a conversation or writing it down or drawing it, just make a list of the things that are going well in your life. Just make a, thing, a list of the things that you love um, and, and that you want to do. And then within that, um, you know, you can also make a list of some of the things that are challenging. And then the third thing to do is, is to go, okay, well, what are three things that I could do that would be healthy for me? Um, you know, that would, that would put me in a better space and, and commit to doing those. And I do that, and I know that what is healthy, three things that are healthy for me. First is to exercise. Whether I'm locked in a hotel room doing quarantine or only allowed to go five kilometres, whatever it is, I can still exercise. And, and this is just me, but I know when I exercise, it's good for me. I also know it's good for me if I get enough sleep and I don't have my computer on last thing before I try and, you know, do that. And I, I can commit to doing that. Uh, and, and a third one for me uh, is to eat well and not have too much sugar. Someone else that might be around alcohol or, or whatever. If we actually can take some time to step out, make that list of what's going well, a list of where we're you know, struggling a bit, and then three commitments that we're prepared to do that'll be good for us and do them, that's going to have an impact. You know, we can't make people do these things, but if we go through that process of making those lists and then including the things that we're going to do and doing them, it's always a good exercise. Yeah. And I think for people to really have um, those behaviours so they become habits, you know, we all yeah. need these habits. I've heard you know, so many of the speakers talking about we can make changes, but unless you turn them into habits, unless we practise this habit stacking where we're continuously doing things that... Um, place us in the position that we want to be in life, that's really what keeps us there. Nobody gets to being yeah. an amazing person or without, um, you know, healthy habits to support them to be the person they want to be. Yeah. And I would just add one thing to that because I can't help myself. <laughs> that habits are driven by a couple of different things. One is they're driven by, you know, what we practice and do, but they're actually driven also by our subconscious and what our core beliefs are. So I talked about exercise. I have a core belief that exercise is good for me and that it'll make me feel better. So it just is a habit because that's my belief. Um, 
and the way that you know our our belief systems and our values change during rites of passage and this is a rite of passage right now as i said so it's actually an opportunity to change our core beliefs and our values by actually spending time reflecting on them naming them exploring them and and if we do that we will come out of this period this rite of passage covid period with a set of different habits and we can make them healthy habits and there is a level where it's choice for us to do it and definitely that is one of the opportunities presenting itself to us at the moment that's fantastic and if anybody wants to uh, get in touch with you in regards to attending one of your rites of passages or the um, parenting program that you've got what is the best way for them to find you best way is our website the rites of passage institute.org um, and that will take you to our home page and, and we also have our transformational parenting uh, page and if people uh, they can find out that through our website and, and online uh, or they can just email us directly info at rights of passage institute.org and rights of passage spelt r-i-t-e-s rights of passage institute.org thank you Thank Thanks, you Anya. so much for taking the time out today. We look forward to seeing you. I can't wait for your workshop. It's very exciting. I've heard a lot about your work and I think what you're doing is absolutely incredible of the youth of today and also for the parents who are supporting those people. So we wish you all the best for your endeavours in the future. And if you haven't joined up yet, everyone, for the Vitality Festival, I've placed the link below. I'll also put the details for Anna if you want to get in touch with him. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at the Vitality Festival. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Anna. Bye-bye.